Good afternoon, everybody. This is Chuck Hughes. It's uh, great to be here today. Um, I want to thank Tom and his staff for uh, taking the time to organize these webinars. Um, I enjoy doing them, and it allows me to stay in contact with my members, and um, I like to uh, discuss uh, the strategies that are working best under the current market conditions. So thank you, Tom, for putting this on. And um, today we're going to talk about Prime Trade Select. That's my uh, trend following system I've been using for many years uh, to trade stocks and options. <clears throat> so we're going to look at uh, using Prime Trade Select to select stock and option trades today. And uh, I'm going to show you over $3.3 million in actual profits. Uh, for Prime Trade Select, and I'll also show you my uh, current profit results, and then we can have a question and answer session at the end. I took a snapshot today of the uh, VIX volatility index, and this measures uh, invest investors' fear. And usually, when the uh, VIX uh, increases in price, the that means the uh, S&P 500 index is declining in price. It's kind of an inverse uh, indicator. And you can see recently we've had three spikes of the VIX index, and uh, they indicated that the uh, S&P 500 index was declining. So the strategies we'll discuss today have been performing well despite these volatility spikes you see here that we've had recently. Uh, that occurred during market sell-offs. So Prime Trade Select has been performing well during this type of a market condition, and it leads us to the best profit opportunities, and these opportunities have been vastly outperforming the broad market. Prime Trade Select is a three-step uh, process. Uh, the first step is we determine the price trend and the buying pressure, and we use uh, a simple trend following system I've been using for many years to determine the price trend. Step two is we want to confirm that price trend and determine the extent of the buying and selling pressure and isolate the very best profit opportunities. On any given day, we'll have hundreds of stocks uh, that could be on a buy signal according to the trend system. So step two allows us to narrow down that list to the opportunities uh, with the best profit potential. And then step three is we select an optimum entry point, and I'll show you the tool I use on a daily basis um, to help enter trades, uh, not only stock trades, but option trades too. It's helpful for selecting uh, strike prices. So step one of prime trade select is we use uh, the trend following system to determine the price trend. And when the price trend is up, we buy stocks, call options, call option spreads, and covered calls. When the price trend is down, we buy bearish ETFs, put options, put option spreads, and covered calls on bearish ETFs. And this uh, selection process has been very successful during the last two severe bear markets. And I just wanted to mention that right now we have mostly uh, uh, bullish positions, but there are periods when uh, the, the major trend is down and we'll have mostly bearish positions. We, we, that occurred during the last uh, bear market, and uh, the prime trade select can also be used to select bearish trades, and we did, um, we did heavily short the market in the last bear market and uh, were very successful. So the uh, prime trade select uh, works in both bullish and bearish markets. Now, the general goal of trend following is to quantitatively measure the buying and selling pressure of the stock. And if we can quantitatively measure that, it allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict the trend. And we use a system to measure the trend instead of using emotional decision-making, which 
can uh, lead to trying to predict where uh, the next move is, and uh, it, it, it's, it allows you to um, uh, trade on hunches and guesses rather than on a quantitative system. So if you use, I found that if you use a quantitative system, that uh, you can develop a discipline to uh, trend follow, and you can be very successful uh, in any type of market condition. I like to use exponential moving averages to uh, measure the trend, and I'm displaying a price chart here for Apple stock, and you can see the daily price movement of Apple uh, with these vertical lines, and uh, this blue line is an exponential moving average. It's the 50-day exponential moving average. So you can see just at a glance when you're using a moving average, you can see at a glance that the trend for Apple stock at this time period was up. And uh, this, this trend has since reversed, and um, our trend-following system exited Apple last year, uh, long before this, uh, this big decline set up. So exponential moving averages uh, are the average price of a stock over a specified period of time with more weight given to the most recent daily bars. So our trend system uh, rules are if the 50-day exponential moving average is above the 100-day exponential moving average, that stock or ETF is on a buy signal. And if the 50-day exponential moving average is below the 100-day exponential moving average, that stock or ETF is on a sell signal. Here's an example of a buy signal, and we can see this blue line is the 50-day exponential moving average. We can see right here in April it crossed above the 100-day exponential moving average, and uh, Apple stock was on a buy point uh, right here. And as long as that 50-day exponential moving average, which is the um, blue line here, as long as that's above the 100-day, Apple stock is on a buy signal. And here, again, is the uh, daily price movement, which is indicated by these uh, vertical lines. So we, we can uh, get an instant picture of whether we should buying, whether we should be buying or selling a stock just by looking at the 50-day EMA in relation to the 100-day EMA. So if that 50-day is above the 100-day EMA, we want to be buying that stock. And if the 50-day crosses below the 100-day EMA, we want to be selling the stock. And here's an example of a sell signal we can see right here. This is for Merck stock. We can see right here at this time frame the 50-day uh, exponential moving average crossed below the 100-day, so Merck was on a sell signal. And at this point, you really don't know um, how long or how sustained this downtrend is going to be. So um, you want to consider um, exiting your long positions in this situation because um, you don't know how extensive the decline is going to be or how long it's going to last. Now, when the stock or ETF is on a buy signal with the 50-day EMA above the 100-day 100 100-day 100 EMA, we take bullish trades. We can purchase uh, stocks and ETFs. We can purchase call options and bullish options spreads. And when a sell signal is indicated, we want to be purchasing put options, uh, bearish option spreads, and bearish ETFs. Today, we're going to be looking at purchasing stocks and uh, call options uh, using uh, Prime Trade Select. And I did a historical test of the 50-day, 100-day EMA system. And what I did is I looked back over a 24-year period, and I calculated what it would cost to buy 100 shares of a stock on the initial buy signal. And for these uh, stocks listed in the left-hand column here, the total uh, dollar amount to purchase 100 shares of each of these stocks when, it, when they uh, turned bullish was uh, $8,204. And over the course of that 24 years, that 
$8,200 investment produced a $210,000 return. So we had an overall uh, gain of 2,567%, or about 100% a year, uh, using the 50-day and 100-day EMA system. And uh, the, I also calculated the average loss, and we can see the average loss uh, over that period was about $150. So the average loss in relation to the total gains is, pr is pretty small. So what that indicates is that the system tends to get you out of losing trades before they develop into big losing trades which can uh, really hurt you, the performance of your portfolio. So the goal is to get out before a losing trade, a small losing trade develops into a large losing trade. And trend following systems are designed to do that, and they've been working very well. Now, it's easy to download the 50 and 100-day EMA lines. There's many websites uh, available that uh, will do this. Uh, one of them I, I like to use is stockcharts.com, and if you just type in the uh, stock symbol and under chart attributes, uh, just choose uh, daily and then a one-year range, and then under overlays, just select the 50-day exponential moving average and the 100-day exponential moving average. A quick update, and it will display the 50 and 100-day uh, EMA lines. And... Uh, this gives us an instant view of whether we should be buying or selling that stock. So a very useful way to trade. And I think overall, this is one of the best methods for uh, the average investor or trader is to use a moving average system that follows the trend. Step two of prime trade select is to confirm the price trend. And we use several trend confirmation indicators, and this allows us to narrow down that list of stocks that are on a buy signal to the stocks with the best profit opportunities. One of the price confirmation trend uh, or price uh, confirmation indicators we use is on balance volume. And on balance volume measures the volume flow for a stock with a sing single easy to use um, uh, line. I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. Now, volume flow precedes price movement and helps sustain the price trend. So we want to measure that volume flow, and I like to use uh, the OBV line, uh, on-balance volume line, and that, the way they calculate that is when a stock closes up, volume is added to the line, and when a stock closes down, volume is subtracted from the line. And a cumulative total of these additions and subtractions form the OBV line. So here's a uh, price chart for Apple. Here's the daily price movement of Apple. And this chart below is the on-balance volume line. And we can see the uh, on-balance volume line is sloping up. And this confirms this uh, upward price trend. So this is a trend confirmation indicator that confirms the price trend. And we, again, we can see it's another simple indicator. All we want to see is this line sloping up. And uh, the numeric value isn't uh, very important. We just want to see this line sloping up to confirm the price trend and confirm the sustainability of the price trend because this volume flow uh, precedes price movement and we like to confirm our uh, price trend with volume flow. When we have an upsloping OBV line, volume is heavier on days that a stock closes up, and volume is lighter on, a days, on the days that a stock closes down. So that's an indication that the buying pressure is exceeding the selling pressure, and the volume flow helps sustain the price uptrend. And another uh, confirmation indicator we like to use is the new 52-week high list. And stocks that are making a new 52-week high are in a very powerful uptrend, and they tend to continue that price uptrend. 
So it's another way to confirm the price trend. And in my trading experience, I discovered that stocks that are making a new 52-week high, they tend to continue um, their price uptrend. And that confirms um, our buy signal with our trend indicator and allows us to further narrow down that list of stocks to buy with the best profit potential. So stocks that are included in the new 52-week high list represent the very best profit opportunities available out of the universe of more than 600,000 stocks or 6,000 stocks or so. And plain and simple, the stock doesn't make this list unless it's in a very powerful uptrend. So this is also a, a great place to start your uh, trade selection is to just simply go to the new 52-week high list and um, look at the stocks on this list and just focus on these stocks because if they're making new 52-week high, it means they're in a very strong, uh, powerful uh, price trend and we want to focus on these stocks. And how, 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 how often do you update your list or do you go through the metrics of this list? Uh, I usually uh, keep keep a uh, list, uh, portfolio list, watch list on Yahoo Finance. And what I'll do is I'll take the stocks that qualify under Prime Trade Select and I'll include it in this watch list on Yahoo Finance. Then each day I can just uh, click on that portfolio and it will show me the percentage gain for that day and the percentage gain year to date. So it's a good way to measure uh, the performance of a stock uh, that qualifies under Prime Trade Select. So I think Yahoo Finance is a, is a very uh, useful tool, and it's a great place to store your watch list and just kind of monitor stocks uh, on a daily basis. And uh, I take my picks from that list uh, when uh, it qualifies for a Prime Trade Select buy, and then we, when we, it retraces a little bit and we find a good entry point with the Keltner channel. So uh, it, it's good to maintain a daily watch list and uh, take a look at stocks that are in a strong price uptrend, wait till they retrace a little bit, and then jump in. So here's a, an example of um, a prime trade select. Again, this is, this is for Apple stock. Uh, Apple has since reversed its trend, but during this time frame, we can see uh, the daily price movement here. Apple's making a series of new 52-week highs. So that confirms this price uptrend with the 50-day uh, EMA above the 100-day EMA. And then we also get a trend confirmation indicator uh, for Apple during this period with this upsloping on balance volume line. And that means that the volume flow is allowing this price uptrend uh, to be sustained and it is another good uh, trend confirmation indicator. Let's look at a couple of examples of uh, that I just took yesterday for uh, Prime Trade Select uh, steps one and two. And here's a uh, daily price chart for Johnson & Johnson. Uh, we can see it's making a series of new 52-week highs. The 50-day uh, EMA line, which is this blue line, is above the 100-day EMA, and we have an upsloping on-balance volume line. So that's, that's a good example of the uh, first two steps of prime trade select uh, for J&J. Uh, &J. Here's another example. This is for Home Depot, and again, you can see Home Depot is making a series of new 52-week highs. 50-day uh, EMA is above the 100-day EMA, and we have an upsloping on-balance volume line. And one more example, this is for Allstate, the insurance company. And again, we have the uh, stock making a series of new 52-week highs. We can see it's on a buy signal with the 50-day above the 100-day EMA and upsloping on balance volume line. So that's a few examples uh, that I took yesterday for um, steps one and two of Prime Trade Select. Now, step three is selecting an entry point for our trade using the Keltner channels. 
and the Keltner channels are basically an overbought, oversold indicator that can be useful and help us enter our trade, and they can also be used to select option strike prices. So here's an example of the Keltner channels for uh, Apple stock. Uh, we can see on this chart the daily price movement, the vertical lines here for Apple stock. Now there's three channels with the Keltner channels. There's the upper channel, which is this uh, upper line here, the middle channel, which is the dotted line, and then the lower channel. Now, the dotted line uh, middle channel is the 20-day exponential moving average for the stock. And the upper and lower channels are two times the average true range of the past 10 days. And it's drawn at equal distance from the central, central line. So upper and lower channels are two times the average true range of the past, the two, uh, past 10 days drawn at equal distance. So the, the Keltner channels act basically as an overbought, oversold indicator. When the price of the stock is trading near the upper channel, the stock is getting overbought. When the stock is trading near the middle or lower channel, the stock is getting oversold. So the idea here is we don't want to buy when the stock is trading near the upper channel because we know that it's, a, it's, it's probably going to retrace back towards the middle channel or the lower channel. And we, we uh, want to buy when the stock does retrace towards the middle or lower channel. And here's a price chart for U.S. Steel. And we can see when the stock gets overbought, it usually retraces. And when the stock gets oversold and is near the lower channel, there's usually a rally that follows. So... A uh, very useful tool for helping us uh, enter and exit trades. <laughs> so again, the idea is you don't want to buy a stock when it's trading near this upper, upper channel and it's getting overbought. And I circled uh, the uh, time frames when the stock's getting overbought uh, with the stock trading above the upper channel, and you can see in almost every case, uh, once it gets overbought, it retraces back towards that middle or lower channel. And here's an example of how I use the Keltner channels to help time my entry for purchasing Apple stock. And what I did is I, I uh, have a copy of my uh, brokerage transactions on this top table here, and this shows the date and the number of shares that I bought and the price that I bought Apple stock. And um, I like to um, uh, dollar cost average into positions if the stock is moving up in price. And um, so what I did was I circled um, the, the dates that I made these purchases of Apple stock. I circled that on this uh, price chart of Apple with the Keltner channel. So you can see... On this first purchase here, I waited till the stock uh, retraced towards the middle or lower channel is becoming oversold. Then I bought the stock. And then here's another entry. Uh, again, I waited to, to the stock retraced towards the middle or lower channel, bought again, and then um, wait, waited again until uh, the stock retraced back towards that middle or lower channel. So you can see in all three cases... This uh, gave me a low-risk entry point for Apple stock because there was very little retracement uh, after my purchase. So, in other words, I waited till it was oversold and then bought. And, the, uh, of course, we're only using these Keltner channels when the stock is on a buy signal. So, at the time, the 50-day EMA was above the 100-day EMA, and... Uh, I use the Keltner channels to help time my entry. Right now, of course, the stock is on a sell signal, so we wouldn't be using the Keltner channels uh, to try to find an entry point because the stock is on a sell signal. 
Now, another really useful way to use the Keltner channels is it allows me to just focus in on stocks that are uh, in a repetitive and predictive price pattern. And um, this is this is a, a price chart for J and J, uh, which shows the daily price movement here, and then of course the three uh, Keltner channels, the upper, middle, and lower channel. And you can see the the stock is following a very repetitive and predictive price pattern. And uh, I'd, I'd much rather focus on this stock than this stock. <laughs> this this the, the lower uh, chart here, price chart is for Alcoa. So you can see there's really no uh, predictive or repetitive price movement with this stock. This is over the same time period uh, that I took a snapshot for J&J. So over the same time period, the, the Keltner channels allowed me to focus in on this type of a stock rather than this type of a stock. So it makes your um, investing decisions much easier if you focus on this kind of a stock rather than this kind of a stock. Here's another example. This is for Kellogg. And again, we can see very uh, repetitive price pattern here. When the stock gets up near the uh, upper channel, it usually retraces towards the middle channel and very predictive uh, price pattern. And uh, this if you focus on this stock instead of the stock in the chart below, uh, you can avoid trying to trade stocks that have no clear trend. In other words, FCX in this lower uh, price chart, you can see there's really no clear trend with this stock. So you want to just try to avoid this stock. It's just too hard to try to make money with this type of a stock and instead focus on a stock like this. So this is another useful way to use the Keltner channels. Here's one more example. This is for Whirlpool. And again, we can see very uh, predictive price pattern. When it gets uh, overbought, it usually retraces back towards that middle channel and very uh, repetitive price pattern as opposed to this is potash here in the lower uh, price chart. And again, we can see uh, no clear trend with this stock. So uh, it's just too hard to trade. You just want to avoid this kind of stock and just focus on uh, a stock like Whirlpool. Let's look at uh, some current profit results for Prime Trade Select. And these results I'm going to show you are in my two retirement accounts. And I currently have um, over $436,000 in open trade profits, average return of 60%. And this is a combination of stocks and ETFs that I bought uh, using Prime Trade Select, and I also have covered calls in these accounts. So this first uh, retirement account has $331,000 in open trade profits, and this is the stock and ETF portion here. Here's the uh, short option uh, portion of the uh, retirement portfolio. Uh, and here's the second retirement account. This has $104,000 in open trade profits. And let's look at some um, actual trade results for Prime Trade Select for both stock purchases and option purchases. We'll look at stocks first. Um, but over the last four years, using Prime Trade Select, um, it generated uh, over $1.5 million in profits for stocks and over $1.8 million in profits for options. And if we break the stocks down, the average return was 28.9%. Uh, and we had all winning trades with stocks. And with options, we had an average return of 85%. And uh, we had 91.5% accuracy. There was 183 winning trade, 17 losing trades. So let's look at the stock portfolios first. I'll just go through these pretty quickly, but these were stocks that were um, selected using Prime Trade Select. And in this first portfolio, we can see um, it produced $143,000 in profits, average return of, of 30%. So I'll just kind of run through these uh, over the last four years. 
uh, the prime trade select's been been working very well despite the uh, volatile market conditions we've had over the last four years in the financial turmoil. So the uh, system's been uh, performing well. And in my advisory service, we also maintain a stock portfolio, and I just took a snapshot of our stock portfolio. Uh, we have $175,000 in open trade profits and an average return of uh, 106%. So the performance, uh, both the real-time and the advisory service performance, uh, demonstrate that the um, prime trade select is, is a good way to select stocks and has produced consistent returns uh, regardless of the market conditions.